As more and more electric cars and plug-in cars hit the roads around the world, demand for public charging infrastructure is at an all-time high. And while many of us plug-in veterans know the rules of public charging etiquette off by heart, it's come to my attention that alongside the growing number of people wanting to charge their cars, there's a proportional increase in idiots determined to spoil it for everyone else. Sometimes it's people who haven't been properly educated by a dealership on proper etiquette. Sometimes it's people just being plain old selfish. Either way, we figured it was time for a refresher course. I'll start with the basics and we'll work our way up from there. But before I do, if you're at a loss for something to do while you wait for your car to charge, then why not give Raid Shadow Legends a try? It's a brand new RPG on your mobile phone or tablet, and you can start playing for free today. It's super immersive and it packs all of the things you'd normally find in an RPG, from an arching storyline through to fantastic, beautiful artwork, upgradable characters, and even player versus player battles. Thanks to the new 90 day loyalty program, you're gonna get a bonus and perk for every day you log in for the first 90 days of gameplay. The key, of course, to a successful battle is to have the right characters on your side, and Raid Shadow Legends has hundreds of different characters to choose from. I'm currently building a bit of a sacred order crew, but I've had a bit of a play with some of the other factions too, and they're all super fun. If you check out Raid Shadow Legends in your app store of choice, you'll see it's got more than 359,000 ratings, averaging an almost perfect five stars. To build your own team today and get 50,000 silver, as well as your own epic champion, as part of the new player program, head to the link in the video description and get playing today. First up, let's talk about what public charging is and isn't. At one point, plug-in car owners viewed public charging as almost a rite of passage, something that they must be given, but it's not. Sometimes it's offered for free because it's a nice thing to do. Sometimes it's a quid pro quo arrangement in which people are expected to reciprocate by supporting the business or organization offering the free charging. And sometimes, Increasingly so, it's a business transaction, nothing more. It's offered as an extra income stream for businesses and organization or a charging provider. But whatever the type of charging, you need to respect the charging station, the place offering it, and the needs of other people who may want to use that charging station as well. If you arrive at a public charging station that's clearly part of a business and the charging station is offered to you for free, it's considered pretty rude to mooch off that business's goodwill without doing something to say thanks. Someone has to pay for that electricity, so patronizing the business offering it is acceptable. In the case of a public building, it is a little different because you might argue that your own tax dollars are paying for the electricity. While that technically might be true, remember that the charging stations are usually intended for use by people visiting said public building. It's incredibly douchey to use a charging station, potentially blocking it for someone who genuinely needs the power just because you can charge for free there. That out of the way. Let's look at the whole charging and parking thing. Electric car charging spaces, even if they say electric cars only, are not just places to park, plug in and forget. If your car isn't charging, then you need to move it. And no matter what the signs say, you shouldn't just park there without plugging in. That's some top notch meanness if you do. Most plug-in cars today do come with some form of telematics, so it's pretty easy to set your car up to notify you via text message or email when it's finished charging. And when you get a message like that, you should move your car so that someone else can plug theirs in. Of course, there are some exceptions to this rule. For example, if you're at a park and ride location or an airport long-term parking lot with electric vehicle charging, the chances are that your car will be there all day long after it's finished charging or maybe even all week long. And in those cases, it's generally more acceptable to leave your vehicle plugged in. Usually in these cases, the location offering the charging will also have designed charging infrastructure that's specifically set up to facilitate that long-term parking and charging need. Slower speed charger camping is one thing, of course, but behave in a similar way around a high-powered quick charging station 
and you're really going to upset other people. For example, it is considered extremely rude to plug in at a rapid charging station that takes a half hour or so to charge your car, but then bugger off and leave it there all day. I'd love to say this was a joke, but no, I've seen it happen. If you're using a rapid charging station, make sure you keep your eye on your car's state of charge and move your car on when you've got the charge you need to get where you're going. In a similar vein, if you are at a rapid charging station, please don't try to charge the car to absolute full. Charge to 80 or 90% and then just move on. That last 10 or 20% of charging takes an age, as long as or even longer than charging up to 80% full from empty. And it really won't give you a huge increase in range. It will also put your car's battery under a lot of strain. So it's better all round just to skip that last bit in most situations. Next, please do not ever unplug someone else to charge. Even if that person is ignoring my previous advice, it's just not cool. In fact, in some places around the world, it is illegal to park and not charge. And if you revenge unplug someone, well, it doesn't solve the issue. Many high traffic charging station providers these days do actually charge idling fees if you've plugged your car in and it's parked, but it's not charging anymore. Okay, what if the other car is finished charging and you need a charge to get home? Again, don't unplug them. Some cars will actually sound alarms if you unplug them while they're locked and others just won't release the cable. The only, and I do mean only exception to this all, is if the owner has put a sign in their window that says it's okay after a certain amount of time or charge percentage has been reached, or they've left a way for you to contact them and check before you unplug them. Even then though, I'd argue it's better for the original owner to come and move their car and not take up a valuable charging space. Finally, put the charging station back the way you found it. Report any issues directly to the charging station provider and use smartphone apps like Chargeway or PlugShare to help other charging station users out. If the location of the charging station is a bit difficult to find, snap a photo and share it, or maybe leave a report for other users to say you've charged successfully. Similarly, if there is an issue, mention it. There is nothing worse than making a long trek to find out that the charging station you need is offline and has been for a while and nobody told you. Have I missed any tips? Are there things that you wish people did or didn't do at public charging stations? And what rules do you think should be unofficially adopted by everyone with a plug-in car? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell. And if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, please do consider sending a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon, buy us a coffee through Ko-fi or visit our merch store. And don't forget to give Raid Shadow Legends a go. Maybe I'll see you in the game. I'm a minor journey. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.